through a lot of times the skeptics they say bitcoin looks too good to be true it's so good to be true someone's going to take it away from you and that's based on a fundamental misunderstanding about bitcoin people refer to it as currency or digital currency and that's unfortunate uh, historical artifact it's not digital currency it's digital property and once you make that big leap and understand it's property you see the compelling use case is capital preservation for everyone in the world there's no anathema associated with owning property you can own a billion dollar building in New York City. You can own a, every place in the world where they allow you to own property, which means China, Europe, the US. They're going to embrace Bitcoin as digital property. All the controversial issues around cryptos have to do with their use as a medium of exchange. But what I'm here to say really is medium of exchange is only worth a trillion dollars. Store of value is worth a hundred trillion dollars. So I give your company, I give your family, I give your institution a billion dollars. I drop you in Africa and I say, you got to save the capital for a hundred years. What are you going to buy? And the answer is nothing. There is nothing on the entire continent you can buy that's better than Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's going to be embraced as property. It's going to be controversial if people think of it as a currency. So I would encourage people to think of it as, as digital property, a billion dollar building in cyberspace and Hold it for a hundred years. Michael Saylor boldly predicts that Bitcoin will be embraced globally from the United States to China to Africa as a revolutionary digital asset reshaping financial systems. However, despite its potential, Bitcoin remains widely misunderstood, with a significant portion of its holders failing to grasp its transformative impact. In his latest interview, Saylor delves into why Bitcoin could be the answer to economic crises and emphasizes that even owning a small fraction of Bitcoin, known as Satoshi, could have significant implications for individuals' financial security. Sailor's insights shed light on Bitcoin's potential to address economic challenges and underscore the importance of understanding its true value. He suggests that owning Bitcoin, even in small amounts, could be a life-saving strategy in turbulent economic times. As viewers follow Sailor's discussion, they gain insights into his company's strategic approach to Bitcoin investments, offering valuable perspectives on navigating the evolving landscape of digital assets. Navigate Ever feel like you're wasting your money on things that don't really matter? Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out on this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself now. Don't spend $12.50 on junk. Educate yourself on how to be successful in crypto using our crypto cheat guide. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Visit the website now on the link in the description for your exclusive copy. Start your journey to crypto success today. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Bitcoin is certainly at least digital gold. It's going to eat gold. It's got all of the great attributes of gold, and it's got none of the defects of gold. If you could teleport gold from New York to Tokyo in a few minutes, people would like it. It's going to divert capital from risk assets and risk ETFs like SPY, and you can see these ETFs are doing that. It's going to be incorporated into a lot of funds like the BlackRock Global Opportunities Fund or the Strategic Income Opportunities Fund, and so it's an asset class as it goes into other funds, it's going to become structural. The halving is going to cut the organic supply of natural sellers in half around April 20th. That means there's only about 31, 32 million dollars a day of natural sellers. And the price of Bitcoin is going to have to adjust up in order to meet that investor demand. So I think that's what's going to happen next to the asset class. It doesn't have to be a currency. You know, nobody's trying to buy a cup of coffee with a fraction of their building on Fifth Avenue, right? But every rich person I know owns property in London or New York City or somewhere. And none of them complain about not being able to spend their building as a medium of exchange. So the killer application is capital preservation for everybody. The store of value is the killer use case. Medium of exchange is a distraction. Governments are always going to issue currency. They're always going to make it legal legal tender, and that's just fine. Bitcoin's competing with gold, it's gonna eat it, and then it's competing with risk assets as a long-term hold, and it's competing with you buying a, an Airbnb as a retirement income source if you're a middle-class person. No, there's no doubt in my mind Bitcoin was a better investment at 17,000 than it was at 65,000. I take the Warren Buffett view on this. Bitcoin is a superior investment to gold, equity bonds, and real estate because it's digital. You can trade it a million 
billion times faster than conventional assets using a computer. It's available. Most other assets only trade less than 20% of the time. Bitcoin's trading 168 hours a week. We bought $800 million of Bitcoin, and a lot of it we bought over the weekend when all the conventional markets are closed. It's global. It's the most widely recognized and trusted investment asset in the world right now. It's ethical because it's the king of all commodities. There's no issuer. There's no company. There's no country controlling it. And fundamentally, it's useful. Thousands of market makers can trade it all the time. Millions of companies can trade it. Billions of people. If you want to buy a house on Saturday in Africa, this is the way to do it. If you want to buy a car on Sunday morning, this is the way to do it. So, so it's a pretty great asset. It's the greatest of the asset, in my opinion. There's no second best asset. So I didn't have any question about it. We're just waiting for the rest of the world to realize how good it is. As for your second question, the having Look, the selling in the market for the past month has been primarily bankruptcy estates that are liquidating GBTC at FTX or Genesis or the like. Once they got done rebalancing, the natural sellers are the miners. The miners can only sell 900 Bitcoin a day right now. They're only going to be able to sell 450 Bitcoin a day coming the end of April. As long as there's more demand in the market than the 450 Bitcoin a day, there isn't any catalyst to drive this asset down. It has no cash flow. The critics think that's a defect. It's a feature. With no cash flows, no quarterly results, no product cycles, this is the longest lived asset in the financial ecosystem with the least uncertainty. We're buying it to hold it 100 years. So that being the case, that sixty-six to $16,000 crash, that shook out the tourists, that shook out the non-believers. When it was 16000 we were all ready to write it to zero. And that's what you'll find with the Bitcoin maximalists. So now we're writing it the other direction and the protocols working to everybody's benefit. There's just no reason why it shouldn't just keep adjusting up to find the, the marginal supply as the demand builds. Yeah, so BlackRock is like the container ship or the super tanker of Bitcoin. They can take a billion dollars a day into their capital structure and they can haul that very efficiently, 25 basis points. Micro strategies like Air Freight, we've got a higher performance. So what's going on here? Micro strategies got leverage. If we borrowed $800 million at 62 basis points, is there any company in the world that you wouldn't like to invest in that could borrow a billion dollars at less than 1% interest to invest in your best idea? So we get that very intelligent leverage. It's non-recourse. It's unsecured. And then we buy Bitcoin with it. That leverage gives us volatility. It gives us performance. The performance gives us volatility. The volatility attracts capital and we can then leverage more. It's kind of intelligent because it's convertible debt. It's given our shareholders more Bitcoin per share this week than they had a few weeks ago. So it's very accretive for them. And it's pretty compelling for every investor. If you're Bitcoin, Bitcoin curious right now and you want to buy Bitcoin at the all-time high, how do you get the upside in Bitcoin with downside protection? MicroStrategy sold $800 million in debt and we have $12, $13 billion of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. So we're giving you an over-collateralized loan and the upside. But if you're a Bitcoin maximalist and you love Bitcoin and you want to hold it forever, the ETFs charge you 25 basis points. MicroStrategy is accreting. We're giving you a yield against your shares in a tax-efficient fashion. So so the maximalists like the equity, the hedgers, they kind of like the upside with downside protection. The traders love the vol, you know, we've got a hundred X, a hundred vol asset here and they just like the vol. So we're unique because you can't really trade options on the ETFs and an ETF isn't going to issue a convertible bond with upside to Bitcoin, but downside protection. We have now rebranded ourselves as a Bitcoin development company, think like a real estate development company. And certainly the substantial amount of our enterprise value is based on our unique ability to issue securities and to purchase Bitcoin with convertible debt, with equity and the like. And so we understand that. But the only reason we can make this transition is because the software business was healthy. It does generate steady cash flow. It does allow us to issue debt, to issue equity. It does make us unique because we've got a very functional options market. We've got a very functional debt market. And we've got a very stable operating business that we can use. If you look in our last result, we actually bought a lot of Bitcoin with operating cash or cash out of the operating business. And that is purely accretive to our shareholders. So we think we're unique and that's working very, very well right now. Michael Saylor advocates for Bitcoin, highlighting its superiority over traditional assets like gold, equities, bonds, and real estate. He underscores Bitcoin's digital nature, 
24-7 availability for trading, global recognition, lack of control by any central entity, and utility for worldwide transactions as key factors contributing to its superiority. With Bitcoin's price soaring, market sentiment increasingly favors the cryptocurrency, reflecting growing recognition of its advantages among individuals and institutions. This momentum and adoption is reshaping the future of finance and investment on a global scale. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.